Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight the 10 things you didn't know about Harriet Tubman. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we celebrate Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Harriet Tubman is the most well-known of all the Underground Railroad conductors. Born into slavery in Maryland, Harriet Tubman escaped to freedom in the North in 1849. However, she was not satisfied with just her own freedom. She would risk her life to lead her family members and other slaves from the plantation system to freedom on this elaborate secret network of safe houses. During a 10-year span, Tubman actually made 19 trips into the South and escorted over 300 slaves to freedom. The five-foot-tall abolitionist is among history's most famous Americans, a woman with extraordinary courage, ingenuity, persistence, and iron discipline. Revered by some of her era's most influential minds and given nicknames like Moses and General, she brought hope to generations of Americans, enslaved and free. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring Harriet Tubman, the Black Moses. So without further ado, let's get started. 10. Harriet Tubman was born a slave around 1820. Tubman's date of birth is unknown, although it probably occurred between 1820 and 1825. She was the fifth of nine children, four boys and five girls. Tubman was born to enslaved parents in Dorchester County, Maryland. Her mother was Harriet Green and her father was Ben Ross. Originally named Araminta Harriet Ross, Tubman was nicknamed Minty by her parents. Araminta would eventually change her name to Harriet, possibly to honor her mother. 9. Physical violence was a part of daily life. From an early age, Tubman was subjected to the beatings and abuse that were commonplace in many slave-owning homes. Already frail and small, Tubman's health began to deteriorate, decreasing her value to her owners and limiting her prospects for work. The most severe injury occurred when Tubman was an adolescent. Always ready to stand up for someone else, Tubman blocked a doorway to protect another field hand from an angry overseer. The overseer picked up and threw a two-pound weight at the field hand. It fell short, striking Tubman on the head. She never fully recovered from the blow, which in turn resulted in Tubman's enduring seizures, severe headaches, and narcoleptic episodes for the rest of her life. She also experienced intense dream states, which she classified as religious experiences. She even underwent brain surgery at Boston, Massachusetts General Hospital to alleviate the pains and buzzing she experienced regularly. However, the seizures and headaches would continue for the rest of her life. 8. Harriet's husband refused to join her on the Underground Railroad. Since slaves were not legally allowed to marry, Tubman entered into an informal marital union with John Tubman, a free black man in 1844. Little is known about John Tubman or his marriage to Harriet, including whether and how long they lived together. When Harriet decided that she would seek her freedom in the North, her husband John declined to make the voyage with her on the Underground Railroad. He was already free. He did not want to move North and felt that he was fine where he was. Harriet would eventually come back to the South to convince her husband to join her. But by the time she returned, he had remarried, assuming that she had been captured and killed during her escape. In 1869, Tubman married a Civil War veteran named Nelson Davis. In 1874, the couple adopted a baby girl named Gertie. Harriet and Nelson lived in peace in Auburn, New York for 19 years. 7. Tubman did not start the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad was a network of secret routes and safe houses established in the United States during the early to mid-1800s. It was established by white abolitionists and sympathizers who wanted to help enslaved African Americans escape into free states and Canada. Quakers are considered the first organized group to actively help escape slaves, and they laid the groundwork for the Underground Railroad routes and shelters for escapees. The African Methodist Episcopal Church was another religious group who proactively assisted fugitive slaves. 
Tubman first encountered the Underground Railroad when she used it to escape slavery herself in 1849. Following a bout of illness and the death of her owner, Tubman and the rest of the slaves on the plantation feared that they would be sold and their families severed forever. Tubman decided to escape slavery in Maryland and followed the North Star by night, making her way to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Making use of the Underground Railroad, Tubman traveled nearly 90 miles to Philadelphia. She crossed into the free state with a feeling of relief and awe. She later recalled feeling like she was in heaven. Six, Tubman made the perilous trip to slave country 19 times. Rather than remaining in safety of the North, Tubman made it her mission to rescue her family and others living in slavery via the Underground Railroad. In December 1850, Tubman returned to Maryland and escorted her sister and her sister's two children to freedom. This was the first of many trips by Tubman as she would return to the South again and again. She devised clever techniques that helped make her forays successful, including using the horse and buggy for the first leg of the journey. Tubman successfully used the skills she learned while working on the wharves, fields, and woods. She became adept at observing the stars and natural environment while learning the secret communication of free and enslaved African Americans that was very instrumental to their escapes. However, the dynamics of escaping slavery changed in 1850 with the passage of the Fugitive Slave Law. This law stated that escaped slaves could be captured in the North and returned to slavery, leading to the abduction of former slaves and free blacks living in free states. In response to the law, Tubman rerouted the Underground Railroad to Canada, which prohibited slavery categorically. Five, Tubman served in the Union Army during the Civil War. During the Civil War, Tubman served the United States Army as a spy, scout, nurse, and cook. In early 1862, Tubman traveled to South Carolina to provide badly needed nursing care for African American soldiers and civilians. Working with Major General David Hunter, Tubman mapped unfamiliar terrain and provided key intelligence behind Confederate lines. On June 1, 1863, she joined Colonel James Montgomery and his 2nd South Carolina Infantry. Composed of emancipated slaves, Harriet led an assault on several plantations along the Combahee River. This raid rescued more than 700 enslaved people, many of whom later enlisted in the Union Army. These actions weakened the Confederate economy while providing the Union Army with more soldiers. As the first woman to lead an armed expedition in the war, her role in the raid was widely celebrated in the press, increasing her fame and her legend. Four, Tubman received little compensation for her contributions to the Civil War. Despite her contributions to the war effort, Tubman received little compensation, likely earning less than $200 during the war itself. Compounding the issue was Tubman's clandestine work as a spy, making it difficult for the federal government to formally recognize her work. For years, Tubman repeatedly requested an official military pension, but she was denied. Two decades after the war's end, a U.S. congressman went so far as to introduce legislation calling for Tubman to receive a $2,000 pension, but the bill was defeated. In the end, Tubman received some military benefits, but only as the wife of an official veteran, which was her second husband, Nelson Davis. She was finally awarded $8 per month in 1895 as Davis's widow and only $20 in 1899 for her service. Three, Tubman settled in Auburn, New York after the Civil War. In early 1859, abolitionist Senator William H. Seward sold Tubman a small piece of land on the outskirts of Auburn, New York. The land in Auburn became a haven for Tubman's family and friends. She also began taking in orphans and the elderly. 
Tubman established the Harriet Tubman Home for the Aged on a property adjacent to her own. The home later attracted the support of former abolitionist comrades, as well as the support of the citizens of Auburn to help it continue in existence for some years after her death. Tubman continued her charity work by helping free slaves find jobs, and she was even involved in the movement to secure women's right to vote. She suffered multiple financial setbacks, but she continued to give freely in spite of her economic woes. In 1903, she donated a parcel of her land to the Thompson AME Zion Church in Auburn. Tubman also deeded over her home for the age to the church, who were able to manage and continue services for a few years after her death. Two, Harriet Tubman died of pneumonia in 1913. As Tubman aged, the head injuries sustained early in her life became more painful and more disruptive. Years of hard labor had also taken a toll on her. In 1911, she was too frail to live alone and moved next door into the rest home that she established, the Harriet Tubman Home for the Aged. There she lived for the last two years of her life. Before her death, Tubman told friends and family surrounding her deathbed, I go to prepare a place for you. She died of pneumonia on March 10, 1913, at around the age of 93. Harriet Tubman was buried with military honors at Fort Hill Cemetery in Auburn, New York. 1. Tubman is honored for her legacy as leader, liberator, and humanitarian. Now over a century after her death, the deeply spiritual Tubman is remembered for her unwavering commitment to freedom and human rights. She is truly an American hero. Today, her three properties in Auburn, New York, the Harriet Tubman Home for the Aged, the nearby Harriet Tubman Residence, and the Thompson AME Zion Church make up the Harriet Tubman National Historical Park. Harriet Tubman Day is now an official American holiday observed on March 10th. It was approved and proclaimed into law in 1990 in honor of the courageous anti-slavery activist. Her life, legacy, and accomplishments are also recognized by a statue of her in the halls of Capitol Hill. Maryland officials have opened up a 480-acre Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad State Park that preserves the same landscapes and scenery of a time that Harriet grew up in. The park sits on the trailhead of the state-designated 125-mile Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway, an all-American road that cuts through her home turf on Maryland's eastern shore. Furthermore, extensive work was underway to place her image on the $20 bill in 2020. But the current administration has delayed the design and announced that no new imagery will be unveiled. But we will not give up on this initiative to see her on the $20 bill, y'all. She deserves this honor. In closing, here is one of Harriet Tubman's quotes. I was the conductor of the Underground Railroad for eight years, and I can say what most conductors can't say. I never ran my train off the track, and I never lost a passenger. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us, and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.